Welcome to Bosch Professional Live UK. I'm Danny Parks. And I'm Chris Murray. And I'm Lizzie. So today's live stream, for those who might, might be just joining us after our little technical difficulties there, we're going to be talking about our professional range of 18 volt site radios. And as usual, we are live, so leave all your questions in the chat and I'll get them over to Chris and Dan who will answer them during the stream. So we actually had a, a quite an involved uh, chat back and forth with yeah. uh, ourselves and all the users there. Had many questions on not only just the, the topic of last week's live stream, which is our LBOX system, but also about mm. a lot of new products that may or may not be in the pipeline, as well as other questions about different systems that we've got. That's it. So if we keep the questions in the, uh, in the live stream chat uh, based around the radio system, but if there is anything else that you want to know about, Feel free to pop it in the uh, in the chat there, and we'll see what we can address uh, face to face on camera today. Uh, if there's anything else that we can't, we need to follow up later on. Um, just pop it in the comments, and we'll uh, we'll comment on it later. Excellent. Right. So before we get started looking at the current range of 18 volt radios we've got, mm -hmm. let's have a little blast in the past and have a look at something or a number of products. We've got one example here of what our radios used to look like. So here I've got an example of the GML. 10.8 Li, or the 10.8 VLI actually. Very well respected machine though, we've, we've uh, seen plenty of these out there. Um, now, so, uh, <laughs> there are a number of these machines, uh, these products, we had, a, we had one that was this one here, for example, which was 10.8, the precursor to the, the 12 volt system that we you know, renamed 10.8 to 12 volt, and then we actually had another one which was an 18 volt, we used to call that the power box, or the GML power box system. That was it, it was a little bit shorter than this, probably about, about two thirds mm. the size. Uh, um, yeah, yeah it took an 18 volt battery in the back yeah. of it. Yeah. Excellent product, but one flaw, it didn't have DAB. And quite rightly, you guys gave us feedback, I think it was all on social media when we had our Facebook, well, on the Facebook page that we had at the time, and quite rightly you gave us a good old grilling on why don't we have a DAB radio. Yeah. Fair shout. Ironically, actually, the, the DAB, I believe, and you can someone out there in the chat can correct my history, but I believe mm. DAB was actually a German invention. But ironically, uh, I say ironically, Sheldon Freud, uh, DAB wasn't actually very popular in Europe. So mm. in the UK, yeah, absolutely, we, we're, we're quite, I guess you could say, technologically advanced in that respect. We, we had DAB, but it wasn't something very popular in Europe. So it did mm. take a little bit of time to you know, get that message across that there's a really, mm. really strong market here in uh, the UK and I think also I think in Europe generally speaking maybe what happened is they started to develop or adopt DAB platforms too so mm. it all you can say the stars align so to speak for yeah. us and we we're then able finally to offer you guys a DAB solution I think we've had these radios out in the range for at least a couple of years now isn't yeah, it? yeah at least a couple of years definitely right so let's start I guess let's have a look at the first machine on the list ironically again it's not DAB but we'll be talking about the DAB products the first one we got here that's it's the, going to be uh, yep the GPB 18V 2C. Okay, so we changed the name. As I said before, we used to call most of our uh, our radios either a power box or a GML. Now we've gone to the name, the, the standard name of a GPB, and I'd like to remember professional pa power box. Exactly, 18 volt dash 2C. Mm. So yes, 18 volt, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, two could mean either second generation, but I like to remember it more the fact that it's quite simple. It's got two speakers, nice yeah. and easy to remember. So this model itself has two speakers giving you a total of 15 watts of power each speaker here is seven and a half watts mm. okay the final value there is c it's a connected product like many of our other products that have a c in it this means it's bluetooth connected which means again that you can then stream music straight to this device via your phone or whatever smart device you've got yeah and there's a few different ways that we can connect that mm -hmm. uh, between your, a phone or a device and this machine so we'll cover that shortly Okay, when it comes to the basic spec, before I start to get into the real nitty gritty, it's not heavyweight really, it's only about two and a half kilos without a battery. It is robustly made, it's made out of obviously standard Bosch glass reinforced plastics. It's got a, a number of features to help try and minimize uh, damage. You've got a couple of bumpers here. They are quite, quite mirrored all over the body here, a couple of risers here, but the whole thing has got this nice tough plastic because we know what we know what the job sites are like, yeah. uh, we know what you're like on the job <laughs> sites, we know how that these have to be designed to a certain level to survive the, the rigors of the site. Yeah. Um, the actual buttons themselves are nice soft rubberized buttons, I think there's micro switches, nice yeah. robust modeling, and actually this machine is actually IP54 rated. So let me show you the back, if I go to the overhead camera I'll show you where the battery goes. So what you've got is you've got this sealed uh, door on the back. One second, it's easier to open it like this. It's hard to do it on camera. Tell it's well sealed. <laughs> yeah. So here you go, here's your example. You've got a, we've got a, quite an old three amp hour 
cool pack battery, but this, this device will obviously accept any of the compact batteries, 1.5 up to 3 amp hour. Yep. It will take a 3 amp hour to a 6 amp hour pro core battery, uh, uh, sorry, cool pack battery. Um, but then if you really want, you can actually fit um, a 5.5 and 8 uh, pro core battery, uh, the 4 amp hour pro core battery as well. So yes. you've got an example there. We've got a 5.5 amp hour here, so um, just to make sure. Actually, you've got the cable in there as well, haven't you? I've made it hard for you. <laughs> you've made it really difficult. There you go. See that pops straight in there, door closes. Now it's important to note that yes, that means the only real exception is that it doesn't take, it doesn't physically fit the Procore 12 amp hour battery, but it will work. Electric electronically, it will fit fine. It's mm -hmm. just the door is the only issue that you can't close it. But I, and if I'm being honest, a 12 amp hour Procore battery is absolute overkill for a radio. Unless you're planning on hanging this well out of reach somewhere up on some scaffolding somewhere. For a couple of weeks, yeah? For a couple of weeks, I think, yeah. Okay, so important to note, so the, it's, if you're running a standard battery, so anything other than that 12 amp hour, and you can close the lid, that means this product is now IP54 rated, or mm. co correctly, IP54. This means it's virtually dust proof, which is obviously important on a job site. Um, any, any dust that could get in there um, wouldn't have any effect on the actual internal workings of the device. You don't have to worry about that at all. That's it. Uh, Remember, if you've got any batteries knocking around out there that are some of the slightly lower capacity batteries, like one and a half amps or two amp hour batteries that you're not necessarily using every day, um, if you've stepped up, for instance, to the Procore batteries, um, pop those in this, this particular machine. You're going to get plenty of runtime out of those older, slightly uh, lower capacity batteries. It's a very mm -hmm. low energy product. Mm -hmm. Um, and then finally, the, the IP54 is uh, to do with water ingress. And I mean, at, at IP54, mm. uh, it means it's perfectly suitable for the English weather, the yeah. typical English weather we have here. So it's designed to withstand rain, anything other than full immersion or basically a pressure washer again. So yeah. good for on-site, mucky business, yeah. rain, etc., etc. Uh, when it comes to the back here, again, I'll pop over to the overhead. Uh, you obviously, you've got your little radio, your aerial here. So this is an FM radio. The standard FM frequencies. On the back, you've got your auxiliary in, so you can plug a, a media device in there if you've got one. If yep. you've still got a phone that actually allows you to plug in a, the, the, the included auxiliary jack, then you can plug that into the back here. Yeah, just a three and a half millimeter um, audio cable. That's right. You've got a little USB slot here, so if you are using a smart device to either plug into the aux cable or if you're using Bluetooth, then you can trickle charge that phone or that device yep. off this device running it on the battery, or if you uh, don't want to run on the 18 volt battery, we've also got a mains adapter that you can plug in so you can run that with or without the 18 volt battery. Yeah. That comes in a little white box here that you'll find when you open up the back of the machine when you, uh, when you get it. Now, looking at the front, I'll just flip it over. <clears throat> Okay, the, the interface is really simple. You've got your, your main controls, you've got your on and, on and your volume button, and then you've got your source and, and or your, your mode wheel button here. So just switching it on. You see, I've already got that set on the Bluetooth mode, but you see you've got your FM1 and FM2. So you've got four presets per FM mode, so a total of eight. Um, you've got your total of eight presets. Yep. Um, you've got the uh, ability to switch through here through via the source to the next, the auxiliary cable. The auxiliary cable, oh, sorry. There we go. The, uh, the aux cable settings here where we get source. And then you can switch here to pick up the, the Bluetooth settings. So I've, yeah. I've synced this to my, uh, I've synced this to my phone for audio. I think I've got it set here for one of our live streams. But I won't bother boring you with listening to our voices, <laughs> nonetheless. Um, when it comes to a uh, typical interface, oh, I'll leave it this way for a second. Okay, you've got a, a simple single mode button here to go into the menu. So I can just hold that button down. Okay, and then you'll go into your standard mode setting. So you've got your EQ, and then you can adjust the time here. When it comes to the EQ, it's good to know that you can alter the, 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 the sound of the, of the radio. When it comes as a default with all the things set at zero, I must admit, it's a bit on the dull side. Mm. But you can preset this EQ however you'd like. I like to add a little bit of bass, really. It makes it sound, sound like a much fuller device. So don't be disheartened when you purchase this product and set it up for the first, uh, play it for the first time. You can tweak the EQ to make it to your liking. That's it. Some yeah. of the other devices we've got have presets, like uh, the Rock or the Pop, Jazz, mm. etc. presets. This doesn't have those presets, but you can still tweak the EQ via this thing I showed you there. Yeah.
quite handy if you're working outdoors, especially. Yeah, you, you might want to fill the space with a little bit more base. Exactly. Right, OK, well, so I've covered this device, but there is another one that looks virtually the same. And that's this one here. So I'm just going to pop this to one side. So the next machine or next product we've got here, almost the same name, really. Yeah. Yep, this is the GPB18V-2C. Or oh, actually SC for this model as well. Yeah. So there's an additional feature there. That's right. So SC, uh, not speed control. That's no. typically what we that's, that's, that's not a nice way of confusing people. Yeah. No, it's an SC. Um, essentially, what we've got here is we've now got, as you can probably see on the top here, we've got the DAB. Yeah. So this is not a DAB, but a DAB radio. So we decided, hey, we're a little late to the party. Let's catch up a little bit. Yeah. So this is a DAB. Other than the, the number on the top here, the only other thing you might notice is that the speaker grills are black. So yep. you can, at least at a glance, if you've got a couple of guys on site maybe, uh, you can just make sure that you don't pick up the wrong one. This is the, the, the normal 2C yeah. and then the 2SC with the different black grill. It's nice to have a visual representation on the job site as well because if you're trying to connect to a radio, um, say you and your colleague, one's got connected one and one has got the other one, you could be poking buttons all day long on, on the wrong radio, basically not being able to collect to it. So it's nice to have a, a visual representation there as well. Okay, so um, there's not a lot of difference in regards to the features. Um, if I switch it on, let me just cut to the overhead again quickly. I'll go through the modes and you'll see obviously, there we go. Uh, right, you've got your DAB one and two, right? And then just like the, the standard 2C, mm. you've got your two FM settings and your, your, your four times two, so your eight presets, auxiliary mm. cable, and then again, your Bluetooth pairing. So that's eight, that's eight settings that you can set on both the DAB and the radio. So really, that's a, that's a step up definitely from the previous model. All right. So that's now connected to my rather weirdly named work phone there. So, um, so important to note, uh, there's an interesting thing that both these two products have. I'll squeeze this one into shot just there. So what you've got, again, in the menu system, it's a multifunction okay. button. We'll press the button here and hold it down. Okay, so in this, hopefully you can see you've got your EQ. Do you know what? I'm going to move it out of the way for the time being. Um, you've got your EQ mode here. And then you can see you've got this setting, the ability to set what we call TWS, or yeah. Twin Wireless System. Yeah. This allows you to set up, uh, if you've got two of these radios, you can set them up. So one, let's go into it again, sorry. It allows you to set up both radios at the same time. So you can then have this as a left speaker and the other one as a right speaker. Mm. On this one, you can see you can to toggle which one's which, or you can switch that setting off completely. So if you don't have two radios, mm. you can leave that off. It will run just like a normal 15 watt speaker. You haven't got to worry about having any cables lying around. Well, this is all done by Bluetooth based on the device that you're actually using. As I said, all the specs on the 2SC is exactly the same as the 2C. The only thing difference, as we pointed out, is this now is DAB plus, yeah. which I can imagine most people, based on um, the as the the market data that we get, I'm pretty sure everyone's buying the DAB plus radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Now we've had some uh, feedback, or we had some comments in the previous live stream about are we going to bring out a, a radio that is L box compatible? Yeah. It was a good shout, to be honest. It was quite an interesting idea. However, we did argue the fact that because it has, a, they both have quite a robust little hook on the side here for hanging off ladders, robust, rafters. Mm. Well, typically I'll say ladder hook, but you can hang it off a, a, a roof rafter if you want. Mm. Um, this makes a perfect thing just to hang off the L box caddy if you're using that, or if not, then just hanging it off one of the handles as well. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So if you've got a, if you've got a stack of L boxes handy, this will just either sit on top of it perfectly or hang off the side. That's right. Uh, the radios themselves work perfectly fine in this orientation. Again, if you have them like that, it's not a problem. It work, they work perfectly fine in whichever orientation you have. Uh, the five, sorry, the two SC, exactly the same body housing, so they're just as robust as each other. They're both IP54. Yeah. So, okay, so that is our, let's say the smaller, the smallest of our radios, the 18 volt ones. I think we could pause there very quickly. I did, we did say earlier that this might be quite a quick live stream yeah. um, because we're only talking about necessarily three products. Yeah. Um, so, Lizzie, let's see if you've got any questions. No, it's a quiet one. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fine. Right, Go let's on. keep going then, guess. So, talking about the smaller 18 volt radios, we've obviously got the classic. Mm. We've got the classic big boy over there. Yeah, this is actually my, my personal favorite, not just for the bass, like I was mentioning earlier, but um, just for the, for the, the power. Um, in, this is the, uh, the GPB 18V-10, uh, no, not five, five um, SC. So again, uh, Bluetooth, uh, 
plus on the top. Plus, it's a DAB plus on the front here. Uh, we've got another, a couple of other features on this as well. This is a dual voltage system as well, much like the last ones that we've actually looked at here. Um, you may notice as well on the side here that we have an extension cable. You can also use this as basically an extension lead. So you've got two sockets on the side here that you can power tools from and obviously just one socket that you need to power the, the radio. Uh, you can even run the radio off just the battery as well, which is situated here in the, in the battery box at the back. Um, the reason why this is called a five, so if we use the same name in structure that we did with the, um, with the previous models, this is five speaker. You've got the four speakers around the top here. Uh, and if I lean it forward there for a second, you can see under here we've got a subwoofer as well. So it's actually quite a, you get a quite a penetrating sound from this as well. Yeah, it's, so. a, it's a substantial subwoofer. And yeah. I, I mean, uh, many people I've shown at events, uh, as soon as I show them the fact that it's actually got a proper, and I mean, yeah. it is a proper sub, mm. uh, that's a game changer. They, they're automatically, their eyes light up. That's it, yeah. Um, you can see this obviously looks an awful lot like some of the other um, power boxes that we've mm -hmm. had in the past. Um, there, was, there is a, a slightly different um, set up internally in these particular machines. They're very, very robust. The exoskeleton here makes them incredibly robust, in fact. But there is one feature that's missing from the new system, and I'll, I'll explain exactly what that is. Um, the battery bay we see here, um, on the older machines was actually a battery and a charger bay. So you'd be able to plug a battery in there, plug the machine into the wall, and it would actually charge the battery within the product. Unfortunately, with the DAB Plus system, this isn't possible. Anyone who's plugged a charger in next to a DAB radio before knows that it pretty much turns off the, uh, the DAB radio, doesn't it? The interference mm -hmm. um, from the electronic device within the, uh, uh, the charger basically just cancels out any, any sort of signal there. So um, we can't have a charger built into this particular machine. Uh, the advantage of that, of course, is this is a lot lighter yes. than the previous models that we've had on the power boxes. Um, the, uh, the perfect solution for this is you've got two sockets on there. Either you're running a machine, if you want to run a, run a couple of six bay chargers, you, theoretically you can charge 12 batteries mm. uh, on just this one particular yeah. system, as long as they're, they're, they're further away from the radio. That's base. right, yeah. I mean, uh, I, think, I think you said that already. I, oh, if I missed it, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, the ability to move the charger away from the unit means yeah. that the interference is, is minimized. That's it. It's just, yeah. it's just one of those things that you're always going to struggle with interference when using any kind of charging appliance. Yeah. I mean, you can also just run a normal mains power tool. Do they still exist? Yes, they do. Mm. Although, <laughs> yes, we always talk about 18 volt products. Yeah, you can quite happily, I believe, run uh, a mains tool to this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the other, the, any of the key ones out there will notice we've missed a side out here as well. Um, this is the media base side here. Um, if I pop that open, you can see in there, there's plenty of space to, to pop your mobile device, so it's out of the way. Oh, um, there's also a USB socket in there as well for charging the device as well. Um, and I believe this also has a three and a half mil uh, jack as well that comes with it. So all the bells and whistles of the previous model, in fact, the pre both the previous models, um, obviously a lot more power, a lot louder. Um, yeah. yeah, I was right. going to try and use the overhead camera, but I think the product is unfortunately just too big. So you put the battery in there for me, Dan, and I'll just very quickly go through the tool. You'll see that it has pretty much, as Dan said, the same functionality as the, uh, the smaller radios. Yeah. So let's get power on. So let's see if we can get that on the close-up cam. Yep. Okay, so we've got our DAB. We're not going to have any signal in here. We're well shielded from the outside world. Yeah. If I go through the different sources, you'll see you've got your FM radio. And then we go to the aux cable, and then finally the ability. This is going to sync to your phone. I think it's I probably going to sync to my phone. Danny's, there you go. Danny's Danny's phone. There you More go. sophisticated. So uh, it's as you as you can imagine, it's exactly the same uh, functionality that you'd expect, but in a much bigger form, much more wattage. So you've moved from the. <clears throat> The, the 15 watts from the, the two, two C's and the two S's, yeah. and now we've gone up to what's this, a 40 this watt? This is a 40 watt, so yeah, obviously it's a big step up there in power. Um, mainly, I would imagine most of that is from the, the subwoofer. Yeah, I think these um, are five, five watts each, yep. 20, and then that means the remainder, 20 is all sub. Bear in, bear in mind though, these are very well positioned to give you a, a, mm. an, an adequate sound around the entirety of the machine. This is not as directional as you would find yes. on the other models. That, that's a really important point to make actually, because I found these, yes, volume, although lower, 
at the 15 watts. But if you are, if it's just a couple of you guys and you've got this directed at you in the room, more than enough volume. Mm. If you're working in a much bigger site with more people, the 360 volume, 360 sound plus a subwoofer means that this is a far better choice if you're working in bigger groups of guys or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So it's important to know. Yeah, difference in that how it produces the sound. Yeah. No. So all in all, a very, very impressive machine. Um, in reality. Um, it's more of a larger group, I would say, that are going to use this sort of machine. Um, it's not something that you're not going to be carrying mm. around very much. It's a more of a static radio. Yeah. But, but then again, if you do want a ro more robust speaker system, mm. you can see it's got the, the, the very classic cage. Uh, we've had many bits of marketing material for this model and some of the prior models. Mm. Um, all around the world, we've had examples of what people have done to them. I think we've had some videos come from our American or North American colleagues that were Throwing, I think they were shooting out of a trebuchet or dropping yes, out of a I helicopter is one example. The same, the same exo or skeletal structures here, which mm. means that this radio is, I, I, I dare say, virtually indestructible. Uh, mm. I kick this around the, the workshop every now and then just to make a point out of it, but really, yeah. a lot of what you're paying for is, is a radio that is really, really robust. Very much so, yeah. Okay, so um, what else can we talk about it? I, I think just to summarize this tool and some of the other ones before we move on for some questions is important to know that the both Bluetooth, uh, the Bluetooth connectivity on both of these radios is Bluetooth 5. Yep. Um, I think good, that's it's good range actually. Exactly. Really good range. I think that's only going to really affect people with very old products that haven't mm -hmm. got, um, I've got very old versions of Bluetooth, but then again, I believe it's mostly backwards compatible. So I don't think that's yeah. a problem, but we've got the, the latest Bluetooth that we can have on these devices. Um, other than that, no, I think that's a, a good summary for this, this product. Mm. Okay, so uh, Lizzie, sorry, any questions? We do. We have two questions have come in asking if we've got any new radios coming this year. Uh, short answer, no, not as far as we're no. aware. Um, I would be interested to know what kind of radios you would be wanting to get. I think uh, what, what features would be yeah. more, more, of a, more of a pertinent question, I think. Um, uh, we think we've got a pretty uh, thorough range with, uh, with as much of the connectivity that was we can have. But if there's anything else that you can think of, then yeah. by all means, let us know. I mean, Fantastic. put it in the chat. I'd imagine perhaps maybe you want a 12-volt radio, a smaller radio, yes. because yes, the, uh, the, the, the smaller of the two, it's, it's still a substantial size radio. I mean, compared to some of our competitors out there, I think this is the, right, uh, the same or similar size. It's the right size for the performance. Mm. But yes, we have had smaller ones in the past, but not currently. No. So yeah, let us know what features you're looking for. It's, it's always good for us to pass it down because yeah. from our perspective, uh, we feel like these three radios really cover the majority of what you guys want out there. Mm. Perhaps you want something smaller that fits in an L-box. Maybe that's what yeah, it is. That's it. Okay. And then just one more. I think you went over this, but maybe some more details needed. Can you connect several speakers together? Mm. So, not with the fives. That's, I mean, you've got enough speakers on the five yeah, if you want. Yeah. But with the two series, yes. You've got, uh, depending on what region you are in, because I know we've got some international viewers, uh, but we have uh, either it's called uh, TWS, Twin Wireless System, yep. or DSS, which I think is Dual Speaker System. Yep. So depending on which model you bought or how, when you bought this product, it might be named differently. But yeah, you can link two of the, uh, the GPB2s together, mm. so you can have a left and right speaker. Yep. But so far as adding extra ones onto that, if you want like a, mm. a full system, no, not available on these Not products. currently. No. no. Okay. Well, I mean, I did promise that it was going to be quite a short live stream. Um, we were prepared to answer some questions on some other products, but because no one's asked them, I think we can save those till later mm -hmm. um, and come out in the next live stream. We'll see if we've got any questions about some of the new products that are coming out in T2 and yes. onwards. Quite a few exciting ones as well. That's yeah. right. Um, we What's T2? Oh yeah, oh. T2. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're talking in random language since May onwards. Yes. Yeah, we've obviously got a, a lot of new products that are coming out in May onwards. Uh, we have some products that will be coming out towards, uh, let's just say, June. Around June, we've got yeah. a whole range of products that are mm. going to be coming out. That Those out there in the chat and some of the other people that might be watching once this becomes a normal video, you are already fully aware of what those products are. Mm. So maybe we're going to do a live stream or maybe answer some questions about those products mm. in a later stream. Yeah. Okay, so uh, despite that, I know we had some technical difficulties earlier, but we've still roll, we've still managed to get to about twenty to five, so that's okay that's for fair. three products. Mm -hmm. uh, unless there's any extra questions, Lizzie. No, we're all good. Oh, okay. So hopefully that means we've covered the range very well. So we'll see you guys in two weeks, yeah? Yeah, I think it's two weeks. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, if you want to know any more details of any more products, um, yeah, like and subscribe. Pop anything in the uh, comment section. And uh, we'll we'll chase it up a bit later. Yeah. See you again in two weeks. Bye All bye. Right. Okay.